What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Aaron Duncan with the Necessary Bluntness Sports Talk. And today we're going over day two, the Carolina Panthers training camp. I know the night practice on day one when they first hit the field was super exciting. We all saw the big time play by Cam. If you missed that video, I'll link it up uh, in, in the cards and in the description, of course. But uh, we saw Cam hit that bomb uh, deep to Curtis Samuel. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, man. It gave me butterflies, gave me chills, all the funny feelings. My spider senses were tingling, all of the above. But anyway, it's on a day two. This is what's important because Ron Rivera likes to monitor how these guys recover when they do certain stuff. How do they monitor their workload? How does Cam bounce back? Can he take consecutive days of work? Um, they said he threw about 80 passes last night, including drills and stuff. Um, I think it was 40 during like team drills and stuff like that. But he was under his pitch count. Um, but... We're going to talk about Cam, uh, the defense a little bit, offensive line, all that stuff like that. But uh, make sure you guys subscribe to keep up with all the videos. Make sure you hit the bell icon, too, because YouTube been tripping. I know a lot of my videos, some people have been saying they haven't seen them, but they finally saw the notifications. So make sure you hit the bell icon. I think that's the only bet. That's the best way to guarantee that you don't miss a thing. And give the video a thumbs up, too, while you're at it. But back to Cam. Well, he wasn't as sharp throwing the deep ball today. Um, I know he underthrew a couple guys. I know DJ got behind the defense a couple times. And uh, the defense was able to make a play because the ball was underthrown. Uh, all the reports were saying this wasn't because of lack of arm strength or because of the pain in the shoulder. It was just either he mistimed it and he's rusty. Think about it, guys. He's been throwing around a little fake towel or whatever he does in practice and warming up and stretching by himself. And it's been a while since he really cut it loose. I know he did last night, but that was only 30 or 40 yards. You know, that was the first time. And I think he kind of shocked himself as much as he shocked us, of course. So he got he to gotta shake some of that rust off. Remember, he's one of the best deep ball throwers in the NFL since he's been in the league. So uh, keep that in mind. That's why his completion percentage tends to be low because Mike Shula uh, used to have him throwing long balls all the time. But that's another story for another day. We're on North Turner, a better offensive coordinator. Um, like I said, those underthrows can mean two things, that he's just rusty, and number two, our wide receivers are very fast. We've seen these guys consistently get behind the defense, and if Cam can bring it along and be able to cut that ball loose, it's going to be a breakout year. I think I put in the comments, I was talking to King Panther, that if Cam's arm strength is up to par all season, Curtis Samuel will be a star in this league. I'm DJ Moore, I know he's going to be a star too, but Curtis Samuel is faster than DJ, and he's consistently getting behind defenses and showing what he's made of. We saw him catch a couple of deep balls last year. We saw him catch that one against the Saints. Um, in New Orleans that he, he kind of caught that post, but I want to see more stuff like that um, Ron Rivera said that Cam was under his pitch count, of course, for the first two days So he's in pretty good shape. I expect him to back off of him soon. Probably not tomorrow um, Tomorrow's the first day of padded practice from what I'm hearing So we'll be anxious to see how everything goes from there uh, Moving on uh, to continue with the offense uh, looks like Greg Olson looks to be back to 100% all signs look like he's back and better than ever I'm pain free, but I want to still want to be careful with this guy, of course, and monitor what's going on there because he was relatively pain free last year in camp. But come uh, game one versus the Cowboys, we saw him go up for that catch and he got hurt on that play. So I want to monitor what's going on, but all signs seems that he's going to be healthy. And think about it, guys. If this guy comes back healthy, we're pretty much adding Pro Bowl wide receiver and target for Cam Newton and his comfort, uh, his comfort, uh, comfort guy. Back to this offense, and that's just another thing that Cam can throw to in the middle of the field, crossing routes, one-on-one uh, -on -one opportunities where he's split out as a single wide receiver. You know, it's a bunch of different stuff that we do. And uh, North Turner loves the tight end. Of course, he coached Antonio Gates for a while. He coached Kyle Rudolph up in uh, Minnesota. So he knows some stuff. He can get some guys to produce at that tight end position. Moving on to the quarterback uh, competition. I told you about the backup yesterday um, that Will Greer took second team reps. Um, instead of uh, Kyle Allen today, they alternated. Kyle Allen took second team reps. Like I said in the previous video, I expect them to alternate doing this, especially in free season, uh, who gets the first amount of reps. Taylor Heineke was out at practice and doing some of the individual quarterback drills. Um, if you pay attention to the Panthers' uh, Facebook, they live stream a new position every day during warm up so you can see. And I was watching the quarterbacks today, and Taylor Heineke was out there. He was brace free. Um, he's not really going to do everything because he's still recovering from that elbow injury from the Falcons game last year where he had that big old brace after he, I don't know what he did, dislocated it or something like that. But he was brace free today. So it's going to be an interesting quarterback battle, man, um, especially when Heineke gets back in that thing. So it's going to be anxious to see how that shakes out. Um, other things to note, there was no changes to the offensive line and defensive line starting groups. Of course, I went over that already. I'm not going to list everybody out. Um, however, Brian Burns is going with the twos versus Greg Little. And Brian Burns was give, put it on the clinic. I mean, really putting on a clinic. Um, there's some guys that are fast, and then there's Brian Burns fast. 
off that edge. Um, he really is Spider-Man. If you look at his stance, like he gets in the four-point stance, his butt is high, his head is low, his butt above his head. He's like kind of proud, ready to pounce. Like Simba in the Lion King, you know what I'm saying? So he really jumped out of that stance and he really beat Greg Little to the corner. If you go on Twitter, you can probably see some of these videos of him going around the edge. And Greg Little's getting uh getting fussed at by uh, the offensive line coach. But I think these guys, they've been going back back and forth with each other since rookie camp and mini camp. And these guys are they coming in at the same time. They're only gonna push each other to make each other better. Um Greg Little, is that am I panicking right now about him being able to start because he's struggling against Brian Burns? No. Um, I think he still gonna, has a lot of learning to do and remember how much progress guys like Daryl Williams and Taylor Moten had when they came through their first camps and they look at look where they are now. So the Panthers, I have confidence in them to be able to develop offensive linemen because we develop guys like undrafted Andrew Norwell and stuff like that. So I have confidence that these guys have potential and the coaching will coach them up to excel. But I'm pretty impressed with Brian Burns, man. Like, I wonder when he's going to get an effect, if, when he's going to be able to show what he can do against the run tomorrow, of course, being able to stand strong. But worst case scenario, this guy's a situational pass rusher that's quick off the edge and can get to the quarterback and get around that corner. That's the worst case scenario, in my opinion. And uh, it should be beautiful. I mean, obviously, uh, Bruce Irvin's in right now. However, uh, Brian Burns will be uh, jockeying for some playing time. Uh, but I'm already transitioning to defense, so let's keep talking about it. Uh, the defense drove it a little bit today from what I'm reading. They made some plays, of course, but like I said, it was because Cam Newton underthrew some plays. I know Rashawn Golden was beat by DJ Moore on the play, but uh, DJ had to slow down so much because the ball was underthrown that Golden was able to make the play. The same with it, uh, excuse me, the same with Reed um, on the deep play also. So I'm not concerned about the secondary right now. I mean, it's still early, you know what I'm saying? So And plus, like I said, these receivers are fast. So these guys are still getting used to each other, still getting used to the coverage and the system. So I'm not worried too much about the secondary. But Ron Rivera seemed to be pissed because there's a lot of miscommunication amongst the defense and guys just not knowing where to line up. And you expect this to happen, obviously, when you're transitioning from one offense, I mean, excuse me, one defense to another when it comes to that 3-4 slash multiple look. So I just hope that Ron Rivera doesn't overcomplicate things. There's a lot of things we can do because of the versatility and the pieces we have, but uh, Thomas Davis said it in all or nothing that sometimes you just got to get people lined up and play football. Trying to call a perfect call every time is going to get guys messed up. And once you start thinking too much, you stop being a football player. Stop using your instinct. You don't want to be a robot out there thinking about, oh, this is my assignment here. This is where I read, blah, blah, blah. You want to just know that from practice and then just get in the game and go and let it all be instinctual. If you're thinking out there, you're losing. You know what I'm saying? So, But apparently we heard a lot of that language we heard from All or Nothing when Ron Rivera was getting pissed at the defense for not being able to line up correctly. So uh, that, that'll be interesting to see how that goes going forward. This returns today. I think uh, Ross Cockrell returned to the practice field today. Obviously, this is the first time he's been back since that nasty training camp injury he had last year um, when he uh, uh, broke that leg. It was pretty gross. I didn't really see it, but from what everybody was saying that everybody was pretty distraught and shook up about it. But to see him back on the practice field, just says a testament to him and the hard work he's put in, the dedication. And I'm anxious to see what he can do and if he'll be able to contribute. I know um, the secondary, we're kind of sorting some things out with the nickel situation, but it'll be interesting to see him compete. But speaking of the nickel position, Corin Elder was at the starting nickel position again today. So it looks like he's going to have first shot at stuff and his job to lose. I don't know how I feel about that exactly. I want to see some more game action from him. But it is what it is. Uh, I think Ian Thomas was back in today also, you know. Um, just I know this is not defense, but Ian Thomas is back in. So it'll be interesting to see what we can do with some two tight end lineups. I know we had Jeremy Shockey and Greg Olsen running those two tight end sets once upon a midnight dreary here in Carolina. But it'll be interesting to see if we can get something similar to that going again with two athletic tight ends um, in some of these offensive sets. Uh, last but not least, Gerald McCoy, um, the newcomer to the league, the biggest signing probably of the offseason for us. Um, it's not so much about what he does on the field, but off the field, day one, he carried a lot of teammates' helmets back to the uh, uh, back to the locker room. It seemed to be like six helmets, it looked like. And he's also been staying after and signing a lot of autographs, shaking hands, and chopping it up with the fans. So it seems like he's really doing a good job about trying to get out and make a difference. I mean, I know he was a big staple in the Tampa community, and people loved him there. So, I mean, he's still just a good guy. So I like seeing him staying after and trying to really make an impression on the team as a whole, not just 
with his teammates, not just with the coaches, but also with the community and the fans. And that's big, you know what I'm saying, because – this is a t- this is a team where a fan base that loves we love the players you know what I'm saying so it's good to see that and give it back that way but like I said tomorrow's practice will be the first padded practice it's time to separate the men from the boys it's time to grow up it's time for the running game to get involved um, it's time to get nasty I'm trying to see what these big boys got you know our offensive line is oh so important so it'll be good to see these guys go at it, knock each other around a little bit, you know what I'm saying, get dirty. Hopefully everybody stays healthy, you know what I'm saying. It looks like the uh, only injury today was Dorian Johnson, an offensive lineman. I'm not sure who he was, but he was carted off the field. But most people think it was just a hydration issue, so that's good to see. Um, but day two is in the books, guys. You guys let me know down below in the comments what you think about everything we talked about today. Um, what do you think about Cam being a little bit arrested today? What do you think about the defense? Do you think it's going to be a little bit more growing pains or are you a little bit nervous about them not knowing exactly where to line up? Let me know down below in the comments. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. That way you get the notifications because YouTube be tripping. They be hating all that good stuff, bad stuff, I guess. But I'm rambling, so I'm not this guy. Without further ado, signing off. Aaron Duncan with the Necessary Bluntness Sports Talk. See you next time.